there are only two ways to change your database. So databases are hard. I don't think that's up for debate. But what if I told you one of the core pieces of how we've done databases for the last what, three decades now is an anti-pattern and should be avoided. What the hell am I talking about? Migrations, specifically migration files. They are encouraging bad patterns and just setting you up for failure. And I'm going to talk a bit about why today. So what is a database migration, specifically a migration file? In most systems, things like Active Record in the Ruby world or even Prisma over in RT3 land, a migration file is a file that's usually named with a timestamp and some key name like added user table, removed username field, renamed whatever. And those migration files are actual SQL that is run against your SQL database. So if you have 15 migrations that were made in order over time, one adds a field, one removes a field, one adds a model, one links that model to another model, then one destroys the link. Whenever you set up your database, it's just going to go through each of those migrations and run all of them one after another after another to get your database into the right state. The right state being what the main branch in your code base currently understands is production. Sounds great. But sadly, there's a lot of problems with this model. First off, it only knows as much as is in the Git history for the branch you're currently on. So if you and I are both working on different migrations at the same time, we might end up merging those at different times, but I may have made my migration before you made yours. And since those are different files, they're not gonna conflict. And now I have SQL that might do something really stupid that seemed like it was doing something really smart when I wrote it. It is so easy for migrations to fall out of sync, not because they're out of sync in the code, but because they're out of sync in the git commit merge history and order. And managing all of this is obnoxious. If you haven't dealt with this before, then you're not working with migration files at scale with multiple engineers contributing to the database. Migration files don't work great in Git in two ways. First off, as I mentioned before, in parallel, migration files can get messy. And with Git, you already have your version history too. If you theoretically had a file that represented the exact state of your database and you wanted all of the ways it's changed, that's your Git history. Your Git history is your migration history, if you really want that. But chances are you don't. What you want is a database that is perfectly synchronized with the current state of the code. There are only two ways to change your database. On one hand, you can change your database in a way that is fully backwards and forwards compatible and safe to roll out and roll back whenever. Or you can have downtime. There is no in between. Your options are full backwards and forwards compatibility or downtime. What do I mean by this? Let's say we want to rename a field for user. Right now it's name, but we want to change it to full name. If we were to make a migration that changes the field from name to full name, and we apply that change a little bit before our code ships that reads full name, then now there is code in production that expects the field name, which doesn't exist, which will error. Or we can ship the code first, but now it's expecting the field full name, which hasn't been changed in the database yet. A migration that renames a field from name to full name inherently has downtime baked into it. The only way to safely make a change like this is to have two fields, one that has the old name, name, one that has the new name, in this case, full name. And when you have these two different fields inside of your database, you can start writing to the new one, backfill it for the old values, and then, and only then, when you have confirmed that there are no clients that expect the old name still, then you can drop it. But that is three SQL queries you have to run, not one for that migration. The first query is one that adds the new field. The second one is one that backfills the old field's value to the new field. And the third one is when you can finally drop that old field. If you're not doing migrations that way, then you have downtime. I'm not saying downtime is inherently bad. I'm saying you have it and should be considerate of that as you make decisions. When I want to have a database in production that perfectly matches our code and can have changes made to it, we're synchronizing a schema. We're not migrating a database. What we use at Ping is Planet Scale, and Planet Scale has a branch feature, kind of similar to making branches in code, where it lets you add and remove fields to a schema. And when you hit merge, it will apply those adds and removes to your main database. 
by making it just adding and removing a fields and models, they prevent us from making changes that aren't backwards compatible and writing migrations that risk real downtime. Migrations don't have a good story for most of the problems you'll run into when you're building databases. And if you can move away from that model towards a proper backwards and forwards compatible model where you can deploy and revert changes with confidence without problems, then your database will finally start to get a little less scary. But until then, every time you make a new migration file, you're risking big problems because you don't actually know the state of the database underneath that migration. Because somebody could have sniped it out from under you, someone could have merged something else before you, and God, please do not automatically run them if you do still use migrations. Because as I said, a merge won't have a conflict, but your SQL might still be conflicting. I was surprised at how common migration files still are when we have had so much better an experience since we dropped them in favor of just using a schema. And in the Prisma case, we just DB push and it works great. Hope this was helpful. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Take a look at the video that's being recommended right there. Should be a good one. YouTube thinks it is. And make sure you're subbed if you're not for some reason. Appreciate you a bunch. See you in the next one.